they showed up and they shot this young boy within two, less than two seconds mm -hmm. of being on the scene. Not only were they negligent, the dispatcher who didn't even bother to say that this was possibly a fake gun, as the call-in suggested, never mentioned that information, never mentioned that this boy was 12 years old, and they show up racing to the scene, don't even assess the situation, and they shoot this young man dead. No, it's not, oh, well, we don't have the facts. Those are the facts, and they, it was lousy police work. Cromo, if we start holding officers to a higher bar, are we going to make it more difficult for them to fight crime, as the way I think Larry might suggest? And I'll let Larry comment after you. I don't believe so. I think that the police should be held to a higher bar. But uh, surprisingly, I'm actually middle ground with both Vanessa and Larry because right now there's so many things that are going on here. Larry hit on a point that has been bothering me this entire time. Of course, this young man should not be dead. But why have his parents not taught him that if you have a toy gun, you do not point it at anyone? That's Parenting 101. That's their responsibility to make sure that he knows that information. That would allow people to think that they were in fear. But on the same note, that these police officers clearly had the wrong intent. Their intent was not to defuse the situation. It was to shoot and kill. And that's what he did. And also hearing his back record, we now know. So it's one of these things where we have to have a deeper conversation here because that's really what's happening. Larry, is it that or just more time to get the facts? I think we still need more time to get the facts. Maybe this officer's uh, record has something to do with his judgment. I just don't know enough about it yet. All right. But your point, but your point about crime going up yeah. uh, is a valid one. Uh, there were over, over 2,000 homicides in New York until they went to this so-called aggressive policing. And now the homicides are almost 300, which is fewer than Chicago, which is a smaller city. Okay. Uh, it's been tremendous. And a number of black people are alive today as a result of this policing. A number of women are, are walking around not having been raped. A number of men are walking around not having been mugged. A number of businesses are open not having been burned. And to be fair, to be fair, I was co-opting your point. So, so it was your point with that that made that the other day here. So that's where I stole you mean, that. You, mean you disagree with it? You uh, no, I, 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 I throw it. I throw it out as a, as a polemic. I, I don't know. I don't really. I, you know, I, I, I worry that. That's, yeah, well, we may have gone a little too far. Okay. You want my personal the police, opinion. The police become passive, crime is going to go up. It happened in Cincinnati when no, Boise and Pume, the head of the NAACP, came in yelling and screaming about uh, a, a few black people being shot by the cops. The police then said, okay, we'll answer the 911 calls. We won't be proactive. Crime went All up. All right, Vanessa. Just a few black people being shot. Look, injustice is injustice, whether it's small or big. No one's asking the police to be passive. What I'm asking for is the police to do their job effectively. Don't show up to the scene Completely. and not assess a situation. Right.